Welcome to Kids Church. Today we're going to have a lesson on grace and mercy. Think about the best gift you ever gave to someone. Maybe you gave your best friend a great big piece of candy. Or maybe you gave your parents a special art project you worked on all year long at school. I'm sure those gifts were pretty special, but they're not even close to the gift that Jesus gave us when he died on the cross for us. Because of his gift, we can be saved. But before we get into our lesson, let's start with the song. Now let's get ready for the lesson. Once, there was a boy who got into trouble at school for disobeying. When he got home from school, his dad sent him to his room without dinner. After a while, his dad went in to talk to him and asked the boy what he thought his punishment should be. The boy answered, I should be grounded for two weeks. The father answered, I agree with that. That sounds like a fitting punishment. But instead, I'd like you to come out to the kitchen and have dinner with us, and then I'm going to take you out for ice cream. The boy was puzzled, but the father smiled and said, That, my son, is grace. See, grace is when you get a blessing you didn't earn and don't deserve. This is how God treats us. He doesn't love us less if we blow it, or love us more if we do all the right things. Grace means that God forgives us and does amazing things for us simply because He loves us. In fact, the Bible says that's how we get to heaven, not by being perfect, but by God's grace. Ephesians 2 says God saved you by His grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done, so none of us can boast about it. You and I are saved by grace, saved because God loves us and He gives us what we don't deserve. Because of our sin, you and I don't deserve to be in heaven with God but he offers that to us anyway. There's one more important thing for you to know about grace. Grace isn't just between you and God. The Bible says that because God treated us with grace, we should treat others with that same kindness. Romans 15:7 says, Therefore, accept one another just as Christ accepted you, so that God will be given glory. You see, sometimes people do things that hurt our feelings or that we think are wrong. When that happens, we have an opportunity to show grace to someone else, to give them a blessing they didn't earn or deserve. 
Remember, that's how God treated us, and that's how God wants us to treat others. And there you have it. We're saved by grace, and then we live by grace. Take a minute now and talk about it with a grown-up. Sing one more song before we continue our lesson on grace and mercy. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and today I wanted to talk to you about being fair because God wants us to be fair. Being fair kind of means that you you do what you're supposed to do. You follow the rules, that you give other people what they deserve and you take for yourself only what you deserve. You know, like if there's a line for the drinking fountain, it's not fair to cut in line. Other people were standing there. You can't just walk up there and, and take a drink before everybody else who's been waiting this whole time. You should go to the back of the line. And if you're playing a board game, it's not fair to cheat. You gotta play by the rules. It's very important for us to be fair, except when it isn't. Right, now you might be thinking to yourself, oh, awesome, I don't always have to be fair. This is great. Well, let me explain what I mean. See, one of my very favorite verses in the Bible is Micah 6, 8, and it says, he has shown you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Now that first part, it says act justly. Do what you're supposed to do, right? Justice is a good thing. But the next part, it says love mercy. Now mercy is interesting because it can sometimes feel like the opposite of justice, right? You know how I said you're supposed to give people what they deserve and only take what you deserve? Well, what if somebody pushes you? What do they deserve, right? It's only fair to push them back, right? But is that what God wants? It isn't. God wants you to be merciful. God doesn't always want you to give people what they deserve. Now, if it's something good, God absolutely wants you to give other people what they deserve. But to not do unto others as they have done to you, so to speak, that's mercy. And God wants us to love mercy. And I, for one, am very glad that God loves mercy. Maybe you don't even realize that you love that God loves mercy. But the truth is, is that if you got what you deserved, you could never go to heaven. And that's a pretty scary and sad thought. You know, the Bible says that God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, I don't know if you realize how, how big of a statement that is. Basically, what it's saying is that God loves us so much that he's willing to be unfair. We didn't deserve to have Jesus die for our sins. The Bible says while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were the most messed up that we could ever be, Christ died for us. The Bible says that the penalty for sin is death. That's what you deserve if you sin, even once. But Jesus never, ever sinned. Not even once in his whole life. And so Jesus never deserved to die the way that he did. We deserve that. But Jesus didn't. And Jesus took the penalty for your sins onto himself. He paid the price that would have only been fair for you to pay. 
God showed us mercy. And so we should show mercy to other people. We should be fair in what we do, right? We don't want to do something that isn't fair. So we should be fair in what we do. We should follow the rules. We should show people the respect that they deserve. But we should also be showing mercy. We should be unfair in that way. If you can be unfair in a good way, you should do it. You know, in that third part of Micah 6, 8, the first part is act justly and then love mercy. And then after that is walk humbly with your God. To be humble means to know your place, right? So if you're walking before God, if you're walking humbly before God, you are recognizing that he is God and you're just a teeny tiny little person. It doesn't mean that you hate yourself. It means that you recognize who's who. And if God can show mercy to people even like you and me, then we should absolutely show mercy. So that's my challenge to you guys today is that you would be fair, but also that you would not be fair. Be fair when it is good to be fair and be unfair or merciful when it's good to do that. It can be a really tricky line to walk down, but God wants us to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. We have some activity sheets. You can do them now or after the last song. Now let's all stand and sing one last song together. in heaven for me this train is bound for glory this train this train is bound for glory this train this train is bound for glory this train this train is bound for glory Jesus made a place in heaven for me this train is bound for glory this train Okay now, let's bring it down. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. Jesus made a place in heaven for me. This train is bound for glory. This train. in heaven for me this train is bound for glory this train this train this train this train thank you for coming see you next week